with arthritis, or which is now known as juvenile arthritis. Mm. Uh, how, as a young person, going through all of the, the pain, the physical symptoms, you've, you've shared that your school was supportive, your mum was supportive, mm. but, but how did it feel and affect you at the time, especially looking back? Yeah, I think when I reflect on it, there was a lot of normality to it, like um, as in life was just life and I had friends. Um, but in the hardest moments, I I didn't have anyone else to relate to. Um, when I went to hydrotherapy, I was the youngest person in the pool. Um, when I went to hospital stays, I was always the youngest person on the ward. Um, and so it was really, I think, it's almost like I was trying to assimilate into society and just be one of everyone else, even though I was going through things that nobody else around me was. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a real challenge um, because I couldn't really share my story with the kids around me. Um, so I guess I became a listener in that regard. Like I became the one that people came to um, because I wasn't running around on the oval. I was sitting on the bench watching. Um, but yeah, deep down, I think there was an element of where do I fit? Like, how do I fit? Um, yeah, so for kids today going through these things, like Sarah has already said, like to know that you're not alone, like there are many others going through things, whether it be arthritis or diabetes or cancer or all, all manner of things. And I wouldn't dare put any of them and say that we, that there's no hierarchy. Like there's no, I don't want to say there's one thing worse than the other. Like your story is your story. Your pain is your pain. And your journey through that is yours. Um, does that make sense? Like mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say? Yeah, it does. It does that right? It have were you bullied? Um, I actually didn't experience bully bullying until high school. So primary school was a really beautiful place. I think mum and dad, particularly mum's advocacy in the school and the teachers at primary school were really like I said earlier really quick to mm. educate um the kids but also educate the other families in the school about what I what the condition was what I could and couldn't do mm -hmm. um you know and, and they journeyed with me through a whole lot of stuff um they journeyed with me through like I had a, we had a car accident where I fractured my skull nearly went into a coma fractured my ankle at the same time so effectively I nearly like I could have died um that was back in 1986. There was a, um, a blowout and we rolled end on end. So we were doing 80, I'm going to segue for a second. Mm -hmm. It's okay. We were, um, I was in the back seat of the car back in the days when there were no seatbelts in the back seat. Please wear a seatbelt. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, no seatbelts in the back seat, 80 Ks an hour. Um, tire blew out. We verged right. We verged left. We verged right. I remember looking out the window at that point and seeing a green Commodore pretty much how you're heading straight head on mm -hmm. um and then next thing i know like there's just black um so we the car had flipped end on end um three or four times and had landed upside down nose first um into the ground um like less than 10 meters from a bunch of trees mm -hmm. um so from that uh i recall uh, dad yelling at me to cover my eyes um, and he smashed the window in and dragged me out. Um, I couldn't stand. Um, I fractured my ankle. Um, and then from there, got taken to the Kapunda Hospital. Um, and then I blacked out pretty much until Flinders Medical Centre later that day, possibly even the next day. And yeah, I ended up with a fractured skull and fractured ankle. And Dad said that I nearly slipped into a coma and the only way that they could get me out was by him yelling at me to wake up because the doctors and nurses couldn't couldn't rouse me. So mm. big tangent, but wow. primary school was a lot of support. Yeah. There was a lot of support. Um, I think the question was originally about bullying. Um, <laughs> That's okay. We get on tangents all the time because it's your life story and that obviously happened and that's a huge thing to come out of. 
Yeah, and but I guess like I share it because the support that was there through the primary school and the understanding of the kids around because mm. they were educated, I guess, yeah. on what was going on. That's right. Um, that's right. I, I think the bullying didn't really, I just was a little bit in high school. Um, I remember walking to the bus stop uh, at the end of a school day. <clears throat> now we had, um, we had negotiated that I would leave school 10 minutes early to give me time to get to the bus stop because if I'd left school when the bell went I was going to miss the bus I just mm. couldn't walk quick enough did you have crutches or a wheelchair or a stick or like what were you using if anything um I was just walking at that time mm -hmm. um basically throughout my life we've used wheelchairs for distance mm -hmm. so going to the, distance or time so mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. to the zoo we would use um, a wheelchair going to the royal show mm -hmm. if we were to go to those things we would use a wheelchair mm -hmm. um yeah crutches and stuff um were post-surgically later on and mm -hmm. i'm sure we'll get to that at some yeah. in a while yeah um but yeah so essentially um I was really stubborn and I am really stubborn and my parents were really, um, really intentional in the therapy and the pushing for better or worse <laughs> that I received. Yeah. Um, cause I know that mum and dad were told basically, look, she's going to end up in a wheelchair for the rest of her life. She's never going to have any friends her age. Don't expect much. Um, and that itself is a catalyst, isn't it? Like the Aussie way is you tell me what not to do and I'm going to go and do it. Mm -hmm. So um, that reverse psychology mm -hmm. kind of all the way through my life, even to the point of, you know, when I got my license, like people were saying, oh, you'll never be able to drive. And I'm like, well, I'm going to prove you wrong. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the day that I um, walked to the bus stop, I was there before most, like, just as everyone was kind of coming behind me um, and there were two older teenagers at the bus stop who basically put their fists up at me and um, just were picking on the way I walked and yeah it was more the physical threat that got to me at that point um, you know people have mimicked the way I walk or you know, kind of stared or whatever it might be. Like that's one thing, but to then actually go to that next level and have a physical threat, um, it was a bit below the belt really. Mm, mm. Um, unfortunately, there was one time that I responded badly. To, like norm normally uh, when people ask me, hey, what's the situation with your body? I'm quite open and sharing um, mm -hmm. about what's happening there. But I remember one time at high school, I'd had a really bad day and I'd probably experienced a bit of that mimicking kind of stuff. And this, he was a year younger than me and he was up in the top building, second floor. And he looked, this kid looked down at me and he said, why are you walking so funny? And I, I don't remember what I said to him, but I basically went, none of your business, rah, 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 rah. And then I stopped myself and I went, whoa, what was that? And I looked up at him and I said, I am so sorry. Do you really want to know? And he said, yeah, I do. And so I went, okay, I'm sorry for reacting that way. Were you yelling at him? Before? No, were, were, were you like talking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were like, oh, okay. it was on the second floor and I was oh, on the ground floor. Okay. Don't worry, I'm not... But Just, I'm not going to yell in here. Okay. Just, yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, but do you actually want to know? And he said yes. So I was able to share with him then. But I think I had to be really careful about my, rea my reaction because most people are curious and most people just want to understand. Mm. Um, yes, mm. there are people who are out to bully and control and whatever it is about themselves that they're trying to get met in that process. But to not assume the worst of others in that. Mm. Thanks for watching this short clip of Life Bus. Make sure that you hit the subscribe, like and follow button. And for more, head to rawcut.com.au.